Is OPC UA the future of IoT? Answers to your questions. Take zero. All right, so this video, in this video, so you'll remember from last month, we posted a video on is OPC the future of IoT? You can watch that video either here or here or here or here. That video got a lot of responses. Okay, so you know, for example, some of the responses, uh, some guys from PTC responded, hey, in your video, uh, you had ignition in the middle, we use ThingWorks in the middle, I'm gonna respond to that, you know. Uh, uh, there were people who asked the question about OPC UA pub sub part 14 of the standard and, I'll, and why is it you didn't bring that up and I'm going to bring that up and we're gonna talk about that. Actually, this will pro it'll probably be the first question we answer. But, you know, why did I not use pub sub as an example of is OPC UA the future of IoT. A couple of, uh, what, what were examples of some of the other questions that we got, Zach? Uh, someone brought up another example of the bank analogy. And yeah, someone used the bank analogy where I was saying, awesome. with IoT, someone had made the comment, hey, playing devil's advocate, you know, when you open up a new bank account, uh, there's actually a person who adds that and ties it in. It's not entirely true. It's actually not true at all. When they create the account, they tie that to you, they tie that to the person, and it just shows up in the UI. It's self-aware. It just shows up in the UI. There isn't an engineer who's mapping it to the UI so that it shows up on my phone, which was exactly what my point was. Go ahead, Zach, and any yeah, other questions? There was a couple other suggestions, a couple questions on Intellic as a business, and yep. also video, other video suggestions. So in this, in this video here, this will be a series of answers, I think, just so that we don't, the video doesn't run too long. I'm gonna go ahead and just answer the questions in video form. We'll probably tie it as a comment in the video in, in LinkedIn. So to, to get started, let's go with the very first question. Question number one is from Omar Tariq. Omar Tariq. The latest OPC UA standard supports pub sub. Okay, great. So the question here was, why Walker, why didn't you reference uh, OPC UA pub sub in the video as relation to the, the future of, is OPC UA part of the future of IoT? Okay, here, here's why. Pub sub is to OPC UA as spark plug B is to MQTT, okay? So OPC UA is a standard for organizing data, okay? And so with the, Pub sub is really just the communications mechanism that they're using. In most cases, when you're gonna be using OPC UA pub sub, that is, you're gonna be using the OPC part 14 of the new standard, and you can read the press release on the opcfoundation.org. It's basically excrement, it's useless to read it. It's another example of why, I don't understand why people in our business try to write things to make themselves sound smart. The average engineer is not gonna understand what you're saying in that press release, by the way, from the OPC Foundation. I understand it just because this is my life. This is what literally what I do. So part 14 of the OPC UA standard is pub sub. It's basically a standard for how do you retrieve data that is formatted using the OPC UA structure and the OPC UA security methodology. So OPC UA standard has language for how you should be securing the data end to end, okay? Part 14 of the standard is all about how do you retrieve OPC UA formatted data using a publish and subscribe architecture. So that is, I wanna subscribe to a specific set of topics and only be notified when they update. As opposed to right now, without using PubSub, I have to poll and wait for a response. I have to check for the updates. Have you updated yet? Have you updated yet? Have you updated yet? PubSub is, I just let you know what I wanna be notified as to what's been updated, and when it updates, you push me the update. Okay, which it obviously uses a lot less bandwidth, it is much more efficient, and I can receive messages from many, many more nodes in the field because I'm only getting them intermittently as things change, okay? So the answer to the question is, is PubSub is not a fundamental change to OPC UA, okay? Well, one of the problems with OPC UA is that it's not lightweight, okay? So in order for us to say that, uh, to, to we define IoT protocols, we, we have three requirements that they all have to have. Number one, they need to be open. What that means is, is they gotta play nicely with everything and they have to be openly available to everyone. The OPC Foundation likes to say that OPC UA, they actually call it an open architecture. It is not. Open is available to everyone and the OPC UA standards are not available to everyone. They're only available to the people who join the OPC Foundation. You have to join the foundation to get the standard. That is not open, okay? So th that is not, that is, that's pay to play. It is literally the opposite of open. They are not the same thing. 
the OPC UA defines open as we don't discriminate. Once, you, once you've paid to play, we don't discriminate what you can talk to, which is not entirely true. I mean, you can only talk to OPC UA and DA compliant clients, but the reality is it's not open, okay? It's not completely open. It's not closed the way Rockwell does their work, the, the, what, the way Rockwell does things. Number two, it's not lightweight. So what does that mean? When I set up a communications channel, between a server and a node. There's two different types of communications. There's the communications where I initialize that connection. So that is, hey, I am server so-and-so, and you can trust me, this is my certificate, and hey, let's set up a con a, an encrypted connection. There is a header and a payload associated with that connection. There is also a header and a payload that is associated with the response from the client. And then there's generally a stateful connection uh, where they check they check in with one another to make sure they're still talking. So you have that part of the actual connection. Then what you have is the packaging and retrieval of, of all the data. When you receive an OPC UA message, it is a huge message. If you, if you put Wireshark on your machine and go ahead and, queer, and do a demand poll to one device that has, say, 10 tags configured inside of Kepware, and you look at the sheer size of the data that's transmitted over the wire, that is not lightweight, especially when you compare it to an MQTT header and payload, which most of the time is like this size relative to the OPC UA size. In fact, it's 125th. In average, it's 120. An MQTT payload is in general 125th the size of an OPC UA payload. Okay. Now, number three, it's not report by exception. Now, it's going pub sub is report by exception. Okay. So the OPC UA pub sub is one of the three requirements. It's not lightweight, it's not open, but it is report by exception. But here's the kicker. Most people don't know this, but OPC UA is just the standard for how you structure the data. It's not the communications protocol. You, you wanna know how most people will be sending pub sub messages in OPCU format back and forth between clients and brokers over MQTT. That is literally, and it's in fact, it's OPC UA's recommendation. It's AMQP or, or MQTT data transfer protocols. Now, you know, MT, MQTT is, a, is messaging queue transport telemetry. It's a way of sending and receiving data. The Spark Plug B specification is a standard or a specification like the OPC UA specification for how you should package that data, okay? But guess what? When you're using PubSub with OPC UA, nine times out of 10 from that device, it's gonna be over MQTT. So why not cut out the middleman and use the Spark Plug B specification, which was do, written specifically for MQTT? We should do Spark Plug B versus OPC UA. Right. I'm not an anti OPC UA guy, and in any way, shape, or form, I, I think of um, I think the OPC Foundation has done a phenomenal job uh, writing the spec, and I think the people who are a part of the foundation have done a phenomenal job. I'm only answering the question: Is OPC UA the future of IIoT? And I don't know how any reasonable or objective architect can take two steps back, look at the landscape, and come to the conclusion that it is. That answer went a little bit long, but you know, to, to summate, OPC UA pub sub is not open and it's not lightweight, although it, it's gonna be more lightweight than pull response. But the payloads themselves, I mean, essentially what pub sub is gonna do is package the OPC structure inside of an MQTT payload and then publish it with MQTT to an MQTT broker. To me, it's hard to, to argue the benefits of going that route when you could use the Spark Plug B specification, which gives you the same data in a much smaller payload, which uses a lot less bandwidth. <laughs>